Hi, Jim Phelps here, psychiatrist, continuing with this notion of using low doses of lithium for the prevention of dementia. If you are uh, new to my videos, you can start with the trailer um, that explains everything that's available on this psych education channel. In this video, we're going to be tackling, well, suppose you've either by watching some of my other videos or independently you've come to the idea that maybe it's time to start taking lithium and then obviously the question comes up well what dose of what form should you use and that's what this video is about i had just finished i hope you may have seen a video uh, presenting the whole timeline leading up to this notion um, i'd recommend it if you are still kind of in doubt about the logic behind this notion of lithium for the prevention of dementia, including especially this um, separate video for the translation of a key article from the journal Nature that I think really put us over the hump of um, really having to think now about it's time to start doing this now. Before we get to the I'm in, I'm ready point, and I'll just remind you that there are uh, some things to do first. Um, this is the um, eat your vegetables before dessert approach, um, or another analogy, if you're thinking about putting solar panels on your house, it's wise to first um, make sure that your insulation is as good as it can be. And if you have older windows, get those up to speed. Um, do the basics first. Here are the basics for the prevention of dementia, um, addressing these known risk factors. And once you've done everything that you can to address these, then you can consider this idea of using low-dose lithium. So with that, if you've reached the point where you're thinking, I'm in, I'm ready to go, I'll just take this opportunity to invite your skepticism uh, one last time, because this is a really important decision. Once you embark on this, you will be doing it for, I hope, a very long time. Um, and in that time, I hope that we have more data suggesting that it's a good idea. But for now, you need to have evaluated the available data. I've tried to pre present that in several different videos that you may have seen. Um, and really, it's a value judgment based on how important is it to you to be doing everything you can to prevent dementia. If, for example, you have someone in your family who had a horrible course of developing dementia, um, that might be motivation. Or if you had genetic testing and you discovered that you are a carrier of one of the APOE4 genes, um, that would give you additional motivation. Um, and I'll just show you that <laughs> there are some skeptics out there. So for example, the Alzheimer's Association, I went to their website to see, well, what is being said about lithium there? And the answer is nothing. They're talking about treatment breakthroughs, but they're, those breakthroughs have to do with the big pharmaceutical company monoclonal antibody treatments that have carry a, at least a small risk of dying and a 5% chance of having a serious uh, complication side effect. Um, and when I used the search bar, um, I could find nothing on the site about lithium. I've written about that, but uh, them about that, but I haven't heard back yet. So with all that, then if you have reached the point of thinking I'm going to start and you need to know what the dose is, how can we approach that now? Well, really, it's a choice between lithium carbonate and lithium orotate. And lithium carbonate is a prescription medication. So for this, you would need your primary care provider um, to be on board. Um, and as you'll see in a moment, I think that's a good idea anyway. Um, but many primary care providers, including my current one, um, think this idea is kind of too out there and are not ready to jump in. So you might find a barrier there. Well, so lithium carbonate, if you get past that barrier, you'd have to think, well, the smallest pill is 150 milligrams. If you or someone you're thinking of is older, the randomized trials used bigger doses, 300, 450 milligrams. And when you start using doses like that, then you need to um, <clears throat> check a lithium blood level, which gives you the opportunity to recheck your thyroid function, which I think is necessary, particularly with this approach to lithium. 
And while you're there, you can check kidney function because that's a known risk with lithium carbonate at much higher doses, but no reason since you're there um, not to check that as well and get that reassurance because someone's likely to raise, oh, did you know that lithium carbonate can cause kidney problems? Almost certainly not at the 150 milligram note dose, um, but you can check it anyway. With lithium orotate, um, the standard most easily available pill is a five milligram pill. Um, we have no data at all to tell us whether like, is that enough? Um, if you're younger and you think I just need a little bit of lithium um, because after all, there are those data from Denmark suggesting that the people who had lithium in their water um, and higher concentrations had lower incidence of Alzheimer's um, as I've mentioned in one of those other videos. So it looks like really small doses might be sufficient for this and a small dose, this dose of lithium orotate might be enough. But again, if you're older or have risk factors, do you need to be more aggressive? We have no data to guide you on that. If you do embark on this, then I think checking thyroid again in advance and then once, once you're underway um, is a good idea because there are some data suggesting that even very low concentrations of lithium in the water supply can affect thyroid function. Um, so I think just being cautious, and that means having your primary care provider on board to order these tests and having that provider on board is a good idea because they should know what you're doing <laughs> um, that affects your health so they can help you think through this in the big picture. And while you're there, you can get a kidney test as well. So is it time then to start taking low-dose lithium? My conclusion, I think you can tell from my enthusiasm is obvious, but this is a decision for you to make, um, perhaps with your primary care provider as well. Um, and I've commented a little bit about what I think the dosing strategies are in terms of the available data we have now. Thank you for watching. And if you're on my YouTube channel, um, I'll just direct you back to some of those key studies, the Nature paper that I think was so amazing, um, and then the timeline that brings us up to making this decision now. Again, thanks for watching.